So I thought we'd take a quick look at the Amiga Diag ROM in my uh, A1200. I've got version 1.0 actually programmed into the ROM set. You'll find uh, it, it, the information at www.diagrom.com. He's recently released version 1.1. I picked up my ROMs on eBay, uh, pre-programmed. He actually has a comment here about, you know, he's aware of the guy selling them. Uh, he actually gets some kickback money uh, when you buy these. Uh, you know, here, here's the offer here. So I picked up a couple of these pre-programmed, and, and they work. Uh, I'm happy with them overall. They're awfully spendy, but you are paying money for the PCB and the assembly, etc. So, and, and, you know, a bit of engineering definitely went into these. So, uh, I guess with that introduction, we'll jump in and take a look with how they work in the system. So we're back over at the A1200, uh, and I've got the diagnostic ROMs in the system. You can see that the high ROM it is towards the bottom, or, or the front of the case, and the low ROM as towards the back of the case. I did actually power uh, this up and had a play with the diagnostic ROMs earlier, but I thought I'd take you through what I discovered. So uh, let's jump in and take a look. Now hopefully I've got the camera sufficiently centered, so let's go ahead and power up the Amiga. We are looking at the uh, uh, individual computers and division output here. Give it a second here to uh, come to life. Oh, let me power off and put the keyboard back in place. One of the keys was depressed. Right, get the keyboard back down on the case and we'll power up again. I believe it's running a memory test at this point, or some kind of test. I'm assuming the green screen means we're good. It's now prompting us to use serial communications, hold down on a key now, or right-click the right mouse button. Uh, so at this point, you could actually be up and running, potentially, uh, over a serial port to control the system. Let me see if I can get it to focus here. I'm not having much luck with the focus. There it went. So on the display on the, the camera, that looks better. Hopefully you can read it. So a couple things I discovered. Right now I'm using the mouse, and I can move the mouse up and down to select the test. So if your keyboard wasn't working, this would be enough uh, to control the system. I can click the right mouse button and pull up system info. And there's all kinds of stuff here. I don't really know what it all is. Uh, you know, the custom chip hardware registers. I do have my uh, uh, accelerator card in the system. So let's get back. We'll come back to audio tests in a minute. There's some memory tests we can run. Uh, some of these won't run because I've got the accelerator card in. If you watch here, you'll see that the check memory and the usable memory both jumped up to 31K as it runs through. So I've ran this through several times to the end and haven't seen an issue on my system. It was me clicking the mouse button to get back. A test detected fast RAM. Maybe this is what we just did. No memory found, press any key mouse. I did click the mouse there to abort it. Uh, as I, If I recall correctly, yeah, shadow memory detected, scan stopped. You can ignore the last error, if any. Again, that's because I've got the uh, expansion card on the system. It might make sense to pull it off here. And we can come back down to the main menu, but there's a number of different memory tests here. Uh, which look pretty thorough. We can let the system check interrupts. So let's go ahead and test the interrupts. Press any key to start. I actually click the mouse button. And IRQ 1 through 6 were OK. 7 failed. And it says, will fail unless you press a custom IRQ 7 button, which I didn't do. 
You can take a look at the CIAs. You can click the mouse. Flashing on the screen is normal. Uh, it's giving me the CIA timing here. I'm assuming these numbers are normal or acceptable because it says OK on the tests. I believe this is done. I can click the mouse button to come back out, come back to the main menu. Graphics tests. Uh, test a picture on low res, 32, I believe that's going to be color. It's got a nice picture to it. As you can see, the Endivision is doing a really good job here of, of producing the DVI output. So we're really happy with this. Hopefully this has stayed in focus. That doesn't look very good. That may be the Endivision not being happy. Let me fire up the monitor that's directly on the RGB output and see what I've got there. Now I've got the same picture there. And we seem to be hung up. So maybe I've got a problem I don't yet know about. Let me see if I can restart the system. I use the control Amiga Amiga. Off on the left hand side of the screen you can see right past the front monitor to the, the, the back monitor. And the back monitor is uh, directly off the RGB port. So this isn't looking really good with whatever that mess there is. Hmm, maybe I've actually got a system issue. I'm going to cycle the power on and off. Again, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see a sliver of the uh, RGB output through a scan doubler, then to a VGA. The flat panel VGA. That's interesting that it ran into that issue. I may have to play with that more later. Uh, we can test scroll. And I'm assuming that's normal. Again, I'm controlling this fully from the mouse. Port tests. Joystick and mouse ports. If you look over on port 0, I'm moving the mouse to the left, down, right, up, and clicking the right button and we see fire. I have a joystick plugged in here. Up, down, left, right, and fire. So we can see that uh, both of the joystick ports on the back of the system are OK. Exit with both mouse buttons or escape. I haven't even looked at the drive test yet. Keyboard tests. And I can press keys on the keyboard. And I'm just hitting various keys. You, you can see in the upper right hand corner there's a K and a shift K. So that shift's working. K. G Why is So the right shift is producing odd results there that may be normal while the left shift actually gives me uppercase characters again I don't know what normal here is but, but you know just randomly clicking around on the keyboard we can see that various keys are being hit uh Let's go ahead to the audio tests. A simple waveform display. We can turn channels on and off. Right now it's outputting a, a sinusoidal sine wave at 440 hertz. So there was channel 1 that, that came out on the left speaker. Channel 2 I believe is the right speaker. Channel 3 again is right. And channel 4 then goes to the left. We can, of course, control volume here. I think to do this, I have to actually use keys on the keyboard. Maybe not.
thought. We can change the frequency of the tones. Let's get to a 440 hertz. We can turn filter on, off. I can hear the difference the filter's making on that channel. Let's go to the right speaker. And again, I can hear the difference that's making. Go back to the audio um, test. We can play a test module here. This actually plays a little song, and then I can use the numeric keypad to turn channels on and off. And there is master volume on this, if I can see the keys. Where's the plus? F will toggle the audio filter on and off. And again, I can hear the difference here. I don't know if you can hear the difference. And I can, of course, turn the right channel off. Left channel off. I just double mouse buttoned to get back out. I don't have a real-time clock installed on the system, so when it tried to read the RTC, it got back all zeros. Auto configurations under here detailed. And I'm not sure why this sees multiple boards when it's the same board over and over. Uh, that may be normal. It escaped exit. So it's a nice little uh, suite. This is version 1.0. Uh, I bought the ROMs on eBay. I think I mentioned in the, the kind of mini unboxing video that I bought these uh, flash modules pre-programmed and there was a comment on the website from uh, uh, John Hertel saying he's aware the guy on eBay is, is selling the pre-programmed ROMs and he's okay with it as he gets a kickback on every sale from the uh, guy selling the uh, pre-programmed ROMs. So it's a nice little set of tests. I haven't actually done anything with the disk drive test. Let's see if I have a disk in the system. I don't. Let me just pick up a blank floppy here and I'll throw it in drive zero and we'll see what happens. This drive test menu, so we're on DF0, I'm assuming. Didn't actually hear the motor spin up. Not hearing any activity at all. Let me see if I can switch over to drive one. I'll throw a disk in it. I didn't actually play with these drive tests. Again, I'm getting no activity from the drives at all. Not sure why this is. I know the drives are working. You know, it's saying ready. I'm going to go ahead and restart with the floppies actually in the drives.
Let's go back to the drive tests. Made no difference. I'm not sure why. Error finding sec. You know what? These aren't formatted disks. I wonder if that makes a difference. It shouldn't. Let me grab a disk I know has been formatted in the Amiga. Or maybe those are formatted disks. Disk is not coming ready. Well, I will have to go up and look on his website. This may be a bug in the version 1. ROM, it may be an issue with my system. The uh, noise on the screen is when I hold the mouse button down. Error finding sector, possible read error. Yep, you didn't do anything. Not sure. So anyhow, let me get back out of here. It's a nice little test. Uh, I'd like to, of course, pick up the latest version of the Diagram and get it programmed in these. Uh, the adapter board that the gentleman that manufactures the uh, flash ROM modules that are plugged in uh, has an adapter for a particular EEPROM programmer that I don't have. I don't know that I can use one of my existing EEPROM programmers or not. I probably have to build an adapter. It's something I may look into. Uh, but we've seen a couple different things here. Uh, you know, the test picture looks good. Oh, now the test screen is going to run. Okay, I don't know why this test screen failed before. That makes me feel a little better. Test scroll we saw work before. Is certainly better. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe it's an artifact of me running that memory test. Excuse me earlier. Not sure there's a whole lot else to look at here. You know, the interrupt vectors, it looks like. I think that indicated the ROMs haven't been relocated. So I'll, uh, a little bit of the music play for you here, and and I guess I will end this up here, and we'll talk soon.